Hey guys, so today we have a full face. I know I've been posted on this channel in ages. I am planning a few different videos to come back with and some of them will be like makeup videos and some of them will be beauty related commentary videos. So there'll be a mix for everyone because I know some people liked the commentary and some people liked the beauty. So there's gonna be a bit of both. Today we have a typical beauty video. We have a full face of hourglass. I actually did this when I first started this channel and I wanted to bring it back just because I bought extra things. And back then I literally hadn't tried hourglass at all. So it was my first time trying hourglass and now I've definitely tried it quite well. Um, and I love it. It's one of my favorite makeup brands. So I have a few old products that I already had with me. Oh, I actually have one more foundation. I'm probably not gonna try it today. And then I bought a bunch of new products. They're all still in packaging because Hourglass had a friends and family, like a discount day. And it was, I think 20 or 30% off, which Hourglass doesn't go on sale a lot. It's not like Pat McGrath or something. So it's definitely something you wanna make use of when it's there. Um, and I bought a few things, but obviously I don't have everything. So I just had to like delve into some of my older products. Like this is the most recent palette collection that came out. This is the um, lighting edit unlocked. The thing is I always change the packaging out. So I got the snake, but I don't think this is the snake palette. This is like, I think the lightest palette they had, but yeah, it's one of the newer ones. I think I got a primer in like a tester form. This I'm kind of excited to try again is the Vanish Stick foundation and this used to be my favorite foundation of all time but i would like slather my face in it i think now i would use it a little bit differently but i'm excited to see if i still like it because i think i had some like ups and downs with it i used to love it then i kind of hated it and i think it just depends so let's just get through this i've got some of the satin cream lipsticks that they've come out with and also the soft matte lipsticks that was a new one that came out oh yeah this is the vanish airbrush primer they've sent this to me as a tester so let's just kind of Let's go in. It's the airbrush. I love the, f the sound of that. I think that would be good. I tried some primers from Hourglass before and I wasn't like obsessed. So that's why I think I didn't want to buy one. And then they just gave this to me for free. So it actually kind of came out perfect. Probably a few months ago, like four months ago, got a bunch of our, oh, I'm like putting primer everywhere. Um, I got a bunch of Hourglass brushes because those are the ones I wanted to be like my main collection. So this is actually very convenient timing. I did my skincare like hours ago because I've been just editing and doing some admins. So it's probably like really well soaked in now. So if anything goes wrong, I don't think it's my skincare. My skincare is very simple today as well. So it's just like a face cream. Um, so I hope that everything just goes well together because sometimes things don't. I think this is way too much primer, but that's how much came out. Okay. That actually feels really nice. It doesn't feel silicone-y, but it doesn't feel super hydrating. It just feels like a mix of the two. Like if you took a hydrating primer and put it into like a pore filling primer, there's so much I've left over, but I'm not gonna risk it. So I'm just gonna rub it into my hands. Actually, that's just like a hand cream or something. I don't know. I'm gonna have airbrushed hands. I mean, that kind of looks good on my hands. It feels very silicone-y to be fair, but just not as. <laughs> there are some that just feel very plastic. That's like the problem. I grabbed the other foundation. That's the one I wanted to show you guys. That's the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. It's actually probably my favorite from Hourglass right now. From the ones I've tried, obviously I'm gonna try the stick today and if that becomes my favorite again, then whatever. But I think this is like one of the most perfect foundations ever. It's like a medium to full coverage with like an airbrush finish, but it's not drying, but it's not greasy looking. It's like perfect. It's literally a perfect foundation. So, and then there's the concealer. I tried it in the full face last time and I didn't like it, but I think I tried it recently and I did like it. So we're just gonna try that again today. I haven't used it since then. So I've just been trying to finish off some other products. Okay, seamless finish foundation stick. And I actually think I end up getting the same shade that I always used to get. It's the shade i think it's porcelain i think that's the one i used to get and it still seemed like a perfect shade for me so i just got that one vanished three i guess they just do them by numbers now but i think on the website it still has like the name and i'm pretty sure this was the porcelain one. Oh my god a fresh foundation stick i used to love these things oh my god it's so fresh i have a mirror like down here and that's why i'm looking down there but i don't even know where to like begin applying this I mean, it's still very creamy. Like I remember it being, I said I wouldn't apply a lot, but then you like get down to using this and you just end up slathering it on, honestly. But this time I'm gonna use a hourglass foundation brush for it. It took a lot of self-control for me to not open these products when they first came in and wait until I actually sat down to film a video because I was just so excited to have some new hourglass products. I always kind of wait for them to release something new, but they don't really release much throughout the year. And then they had the sale and that was my perfect time to swoop in. What do you guys think about this? What's it 
looking like. I mean, I actually think the coverage is a lot less than what I remember it being, but I think I used to just slather like a lot of it on. Makes sense why I was slathering so much of it on because I actually don't think the formula is as high coverage as I thought it was. It's just, it's just not blending out super easily on top of this primer. I think this foundation needs a hydrating primer underneath and not an airbrushing primer because it is just like, you know, my skin just looks very dry right now. Not dry, matte. Dry is bad. Matte is fine. Just not with this foundation. It needs like almost a slip, see? Like it just gets a little bit stuck. I'm almost thinking, do I do something really crazy here and basically use the tint to blend out the stick? I've already decided I'm gonna do that. So, oh, okay. I mean, this all of a sudden just looks a little bit more blended, but it's probably just because it's mainly skin tint now. I think that foundation will probably work really well. It wasn't like clinging to any dry spots. It just wasn't blending out as easily. I felt like I was really like dragging on my skin. And that's probably because of that primer combination. I feel like if I had just used a little bit more of a more hydrating primer, or just left it as face cream, we would have had a much easier time. I'm at that stage in my makeup now again where I look like a panda. So anyway, that's what the skin looks like right now. That's like the skin tint with the Vanish Sick foundation. Now let's just do the concealer. I'm gonna use the concealer brush. This shade might be a little bit weird. This is Butch. This is actually the same shade that I bought in that first video. I'm just gonna apply a little bit because this concealer can get a little bit. It's just very full coverage, which is not a bad thing. I remember really not liking this concealer. Okay, weirdly, this concealer is not looking good today, but I tried it recently and it looked good. So I don't know what the situation is. Let me just apply more of it. Honestly, that sometimes fixes things. I don't know. Sometimes only applying a little bit doesn't work. Let me just go in there. It just looks a little bit textured today. Um, but I tried it recently and it looked good. It's really sticking and lifting, if you guys can see that, um, which isn't great. I don't really know what to do about that. Maybe I can just pile on more of the stick foundation. I mean, now I'm having to save this. So, so far we're not doing too good. Yeah, it's not looking great. Like my under eyes are so creased right now, which is not fun and it's just separating from the rest of my makeup i'm actually using a different clean brush just to try to save this it looks kind of bad really that's a shame don't know what yeah it's like separating and pilling and i don't know if that's really visible on camera but it doesn't look good which is great it doesn't look so bad that like i can't go on with my life because you know it's whatever i'll just i'll just live my life i'm actually gonna try um because i have a stinking suspicion that it's actually the primer doing this and i remember using a primer from hourglass before that i just didn't like i liked it for a bit and then i just felt like my skin just wasn't like collaborating with it too well like i think my skin looks okay now but it doesn't look great. So I actually, turns out, don't have a cream bronzer um, because I think the only bronzer they have is not in a stick, it's in the palettes that they have. Uh, but I have a blush stick and a highlighting stick and then I guess I'll just make up for the rest with some powder bronzer, it's fine. So we have Sacred for blush, it took me ages to try and pick out a shade. And then we have Champagne Flash for the highlight, which I believe was supposed to be the lightest one. But the swatches looked so deceiving on the internet, I don't know. And this is actually um, in the same packaging as the Vanish Stick Foundation, which makes me think it's gonna be a similar formula, which makes me think if I just use the stick next time, all the formulas are gonna mesh well together. That's my opinion. Oh, this shade is so lovely. Like a peachy, corally. I just didn't wanna get the same pink over and over again, because that's what happens with me. Um, oh. No, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna go in straight from the brush onto the stick. Because I actually wanna give this like look a, a good go. Um, hmm. Okay, that's really pigmented actually. I picked up quite a bit though, so I don't really know what I expected. This actually looks 
really nice. It's like a very pretty flush and it's not too shiny, not too matte. Look at that. That's really gorgeous. I've had people say great things about these, um, but I was always just a bit like, oh, it can't be that good. Um, and then I think I just forgot about these. These weren't like on everyone's mind. And so I think I just forgot to try these in the end. I mean, I hate the way the concealer looks. It's just not blending with anything else. That's fine. I'm just gonna put a bit on the kind of bridge of my nose. Just that, dab that out everywhere. That's what it looks like. I think it blends really, really well. And if my concealer wasn't giving me problems today, I think we'd be onto something. But because my concealer is giving me struggles, you can see that like direct line. I can't really do much about that. Then we have the Champagne Flush Highlight, which is obviously a highlight stick, same packaging. Um, yeah, this one looks like it's gonna be a good shade for me. Actually, I was kind of worried about it. Um, that looks so shiny. Oh my God. Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna do this actually uh, to get the best results because we're already in a bit of struggle city right now. So we can't make this worse. I'm just gonna use my finger because it melts quite well. Okay. Oh, this is actually a really, really, really nice cream highlight. Look at that. I think that blends in so well. It's like actually shimmery and shiny, but not like glittery. And it also doesn't feel or look greasy. And if I'm using my finger like this, it's not disrupting the mess that is happening underneath. So that actually looks really nice. I actually think that saved everything. <laughs> that looks so good. Oh my God, people have raved about these. And once again, I just didn't try it. And then I just thought, how good can it be? It can be really good, actually. I think actually my skin's coming together now. <laughs> I think we, we're at that point now where things are looking okay. They're looking bearable. So now I'm just going to um, bronze up a little. I'm gonna use this palette that I've been using as a mirror. I'm gonna go into the bronzer. I wish I had to cut out the taps in editing just because I know how like annoying and startling it is, but it's the worst when I'm like tapping and speaking at the same time because I don't realize, because I don't realize like I was, I keep on doing it because I don't realize how annoying it is until I start editing. Um, I'm only going to do a little bit of bronzer just to ever so slightly add a little bit of shape to my face and just start kind of almost setting things. I, you guys know me and Hourglass Powders, we're best friends. There is nothing Hourglass could release in powder form that I wouldn't like. I think they're just like the best at powder complexion products. And I mean, I'm starting to realize that they are good at Cream complexion products is just today, for some reason, the under eyes are just not it. And that's fine. I'm not even gonna set them because I just think that's gonna make it worse. So I'm just gonna leave my under eyes unset, which is crazy. I might just like set them a time. Mm. If I set this, it's just gonna look worse. Like I have nothing to fix here. I actually do have the loose powder from Hourglass. I just don't think anything powdery should necessarily go under my eyes. It just doesn't look good. So I'm just gonna leave them like that. I'm just gonna take this double-sided one and use the smaller one as blush. I'm gonna just go into that here because I think that was exactly the shade that my blush stick was coincidentally. So I'm just gonna be able to spruce it up. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, hourglass powders are just, just it. Literally everything here is beautiful except for my under eyes, which makes me think that it's actually not the primer and it's actually not the foundation, it's the concealer. If only my under eyes where I didn't put primer are looking bad and everywhere else where I did put primer and used three different types of foundation, well, two, two different types of foundations looks good, it must just be the concealer. And then I'm actually gonna take the highlight as well on that same brush and I actually do think that's basically the same shade as what the highlight was so that's actually played out really well. And I'm just gonna set that highlight a little bit That blended in so good. I'm just gonna dot it everywhere. And then I'm gonna take this big side and go into just, try and just go into the setting powder. Usually they give two setting powders and two blushes, but in this palette they've done three blushes, one setting powder, which is nice because you get more variety of blush, but 
it's hard to fit your brush into the finishing powders because you kind of do need a big brush for them. And I feel like those finishing powders are so underrated. People are just saying like, oh, we don't want them in the palettes anymore. Whatever, people might just not understand how to use them. Um, because I think every palette needs to come with these. Like if you have a palette that doesn't come with these, like what's going on? Anyway, my skin looks good. I didn't buy the eyeshadows because people did say they're a bit overrated and I just couldn't really be bothered to spend that much money on them. I might just use that stupid concealer on my eyelids. I'm gonna give this concealer another chance because some people really love it and swear by it. So I'm gonna give it another chance, but right now it's a bit of a no from me. And my eyelids are very greasy and it's looking really dry. Um, and it makes me think like if your skin's not literally a greasy mess, this can just look a little bit drying. So I do wonder how these TikTokers are making this concealer look so creamy when it literally just absorbs all moisture off my face. I do wonder if it's all the filters, but I don't want to accuse. Some people can genuinely really love this concealer. So I'm just gonna give it another go, just in a different way. I'm literally just using the bronzer from the palette as an eyeshadow, which makes you see how versatile these products are because this is literally blending like a dream. And you just don't need to pay Hourglass for their eyeshadows when their powder products are this good anyway. And I'm literally just gonna use the highlight just all over my eyelid. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And you get a bit of a monochromatic look. I just like to kind of almost get it into the crease a little bit like so. Perfect. <laughs> That's that on that. That's that palette. These are what I spend my money on every single year without fail. Like I need these palettes in my life. I did ages ago buy another one of the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. And I'm just gonna use that today. Um, I didn't do my eyebrows because I don't have anything from Hourglass for my eyebrows. I think their products are just like fine. I think eyebrow products should be cheap. There is no reason to buy expensive, super insanely high-end eyebrow products because there's just no need. I think like mid priced and drugstore is good. Even some Sephora brands are fine, but it's just when it gets to these super high end brands like Hourglass or Chanel or something, like you just don't need that. Also this mascara is a bit broken. The stopper keeps on coming out um, because I've tried to use this mascara recently. There we go. Okay, I've like fixed it. You have to like pull it out in a specific way. It's one of these, very short bristled. I have to keep on waiting for my camera to focus on me because I've got like automatic focus oh it's making my eyelid so dirty well this happens with every single mascara so it's literally just me like i can't um i forgot how good this mascara was for lengthening there we go that's just like one coat, except for obviously it got on my eyelid, but I'm just gonna clean that up later. But it looks really, really good. It's like so long. I forgot how good this mascara is. I've been finding a lot of really good mascaras recently, so the competition's getting really steep. Like I think the Tarte Big Ego is so good. That's been my favorite. I think the Kylash is really good. Some of the Rimmel ones are really good. Rimmel's cruelty free again, so. Their mascaras are really good. Mainly the Thrill Seeker, that one's amazing. I mean, these are such long eyelashes. I'm gonna let that first coat dry and let the whatever's on my eyelid dry as well. And then I'll kind of go in with the second coat at some point. I'm gonna do my eyebrows off screen later. But I also got the Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. I remember when I first tried it, the sprayer on it was wonky and it put me off the whole spray. But people have since then said that the spray is actually really good. Shake well and hold 10 inches from face, close eyes, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why I did this after mascara. Bit annoying, but I forgot that I had this. Okay. I remember the first one I got was faulty and it sprayed like wonky. So it's just... Hmm. This one's definitely not faulty and it actually is really nice. And this is supposed to be that soft focus effect. Everything with Hourglass is soft focus. That's like the whole thing. So I hope it looks good, but this spray is not broken. So my last one was obviously faulty. I should have just like reached out to customer service, but I just didn't have like the bandwidth to do that. As in like the emotional bandwidth. It's definitely not a mattifying spray because I think that's the general consensus. Like, oh, soft focus must be 
like matte but it's not it didn't mattify at all i think it's just supposed to do something i think i just really like the charlotte tilbury one and that's the one i stick with um because that's one i actually see doing something recently actually if you want a mattifying setting spray the kylie cosmetics setting spray actually when you apply it goes matte so if you want that that's actually a really really good option uh this one I almost feel like it just kind of did nothing it's very light very misty but it's very expensive and i think it actually kind of didn't do anything like does my skin look any different like i still think it just looks glowy and almost a little bit greasy and that's really that on that. So that's great. This is obviously not a volumizing mascara, so it's never gonna add extreme volume, but you can kind of achieve it a little bit with two or so layers. Hey, so I think I've pushed this mascara to its absolute limits because on the right, I kind of hated the way it looked on this side. Um, so I almost had to ruin it a little bit on the left side so that it would match. It does get very spidery if you, if they're like not careful, essentially. Yeah, there we go, that came off. And then I'll just use that same brush just to pop some of that highlight back on. Um, and that looks pretty good. That highlight on the eyelid actually looks amazing. That's the tea what highlight shade is this metallic strobe powder in celestial strobe light so celestial strobe light looks so good on the eyelid um mainly in that like crease bit that looks so good okay this mascara actually came out fine i was just having a bit of a moment with it we have the shape and sculpt lip liner i think i only ended up getting two shades from what i can see i got flaunt and expose which are the two lightest shades literally one and two so that's obviously that um, flaunt and expose. Let me see what these look like and ignore just the mascara all over my fingers. I still hadn't tried the lip liners because I think I was just waiting for a sale. I think lip liners shouldn't be that expensive. <laughs> like there is no reason for lip liners to be that expensive. One expose is gonna be here. This is um, the shade, oh my God, expose one. It's a lot more nude and brown in my opinion. So it's not as pink. Like a thing that's just like a nudie brown. And then we have Flaunt 2, which is... I think I wanted at least one of these to be pink. And I don't think they're going to be... Um, okay, this one's a little bit more pink. So that's Flaunt. So we have Expose, Flaunt, 1, 2. They're both just a little bit orange. I don't really like that kind of shade on my... Mm, maybe I can use Expose, which is that first one. It's very nude. Um, I actually think it kind of looks a bit like very um, iconic nude from... Charlotte Tilbury a little bit where it's just like a bit of a neutral nude um okay hmm hmm it just doesn't have much grip to it It's very like undefined. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just not very crisp. Which is what I prefer. Like I'm okay with a super creamy lip liner for some purposes and I'm okay with a very crisp kind of almost wooden grippy, like almost sticky lip liner in other instances. And I actually kind of like using the two together. So I'll, for example, use Iconic Nude by Charlotte Tilbury, which is a more grippy lip liner, and then fill in with a Kylie Cosmetics or a Colourpop, which is a lot more creamy. This almost has the cons of both of those. It's like too stiff to be creamy and opaque, but it's also too creamy to get a proper line. And it just comes out not very pigmented. It almost looks a little bit blotted, but like I can feel that I'm already over applying it because it's just getting a little bit like bunchy. And I didn't have any product on my lips before. This just isn't like my favorite formula. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I think it looks okay, but it, it feels a bit bunchy. Like I've applied a lot of it now because I couldn't get a straight line. I'm actually gonna go in with the darker one. Uh, I think, you know, when in doubt, apply some more, I guess. So I'm just gonna, yeah, but it already looks a little bit bunchy. I don't know. That's a little bit better. The other one's just almost a little bit too pale for me. So I'm just adding some definition back in with the other one, but it's not my favorite look 
of all time. I mean, it looks fine now from like a distance, but yeah, I've definitely not like my top favorite lip liners. So I'm glad I only got two because they're not like bad. I can still obviously use them, but if I got more shades, I would have been like kind of upset about that. So I think it's fine. It looks okay. It's just not my favorite formula to use. And the Cupid's bow where I like really applied, um, it just feels a little bit bunchy. Like it's like pulling on my skin a little bit because it's just so like packed on there. But then the pigment wasn't really coming out. That's what I wanted. I wanted like some of that pigment to come out. And it looks just a little bit like shiny. It's almost like, you know when uh, we used to wet our brushes to use eyeshadow on our like eyelids and if you overdid it, it would have that like metallic, almost slick texture on top. That's what it did on my lips a little bit where I over applied it. Where I can like scratch it off. Can you guys see that? Let me just, like I can like scratch it off. That's not pleasant. Like it's under my nail. Yeah, look at that. <sighs> like that's just not very pleasant in my opinion. So yeah, that's not my favorite lip liner of all time. I had another lip liner and I actually think this is gonna be the pink one. I might just wipe this off. I have another lip liner called Tempt, but now I know the formula is not that great. I'm actually not very excited about this. Tempt is actually pink. Okay, so it's so hard to tell from swatches online what is and isn't. But wait, that looks orange. Ah, uh, when will brands... Oh, I hate, I hate, I hate when, like, that is supposed to be pink. That is pink to me. That's actually a cool toned, like, almost mauve looking pink. What is that? That is not a cool toned mauve pink. Like, I just... Uh, none of these are pink to me. And they were supposed to be, like one of those was supposed to be pink and they're all basically orange. They're brown, coral, and dark red brown. And that happens a lot with me actually. I get that like this one looks orange and that's fine. Um, This one was supposed to be more like nude neutral. This one was supposed to be pink and I don't know why it's not. I don't know, the swatches, it was hard to tell. None of these shades are really anything that I personally like, which is annoying. Um, because I like always on the hunt for just a beautiful pink lip liner and a lot of them just come in and they're brown <laughs> Which is great. I actually have a lip product that I'm like way more excited for It's the Charlotte Tilbury new lip liner that she came out which is called Pillow Talk Fair And I'm so excited to try it and instead I'm trying these lip liners that I don't really like. This is the shade Tempt 3. Yeah, this one's actually a decent formula Oh What is going on? <laughs> what is going on in the House of Commons? I wasn't even really pressing that hard. I'm gonna have to sharpen it. And my battery's dying. I'm like really, I want this to be done. Oh, and it's breaking again. Like there's something wrong with this one. I really wasn't pressing hard on it. Let me just sharpen it for you guys again. It doesn't sharpen smoothly either. Can you hear that? It's just not good. Ow. Okay, let me just try. I feel like it's constantly on the verge of like breaking. This one is so much creamier than the rest of them. I don't really know what happened, but it's not like a good creamy. It's like a, I think it's gonna break at any point creamy. Whereas the other ones are so much stiffer, but not in a good way. I don't really know what happened here. These lip liners are just not really my favorite. I've refilled my battery, unfilled my card, did everything so that nothing is interrupted. I stayed on Twitter for a little bit and that's when you get a little bit stuck. Um, but it's kind of let my makeup sit a little bit and I think it looks really healthy. Obviously I mixed the stick with the tint, but I think it's kind of nice looking. The under eyes have kind of settled I mean, they're not the best looking. I haven't set them just for that reason because, uh, I mean, they don't look great. They're like creasing a lot. I mean, I could try and set them, um, but what good would that do? Who knows? Yeah, the under eyes definitely not a strong point here. That's the lip liner. Um, 
I think this last shade is actually my favorite and the formula on the last one is my favorite even though it was breaking a lot and it feels like it's gonna snap at any point. I've limited myself to one each. So I've got one satin lipstick and one soft matte. So the satin cream I have in the shade Tide which is 302 if anyone's curious. These, I was a little bit, they're also very expensive, just like the lip liners. So I was just waiting for a sale and here it is. Okay, so this is the packaging. Very gorgeous. I mean, Hourglass really knows how to do luxe makeup, which is why I think I'm so much more critical of it, just because it's so expensive that like, it, it should work. You know what I mean? Beautiful shade though. Um, Like actually pink, like a pinky light nude. I think I'm gonna love that. And then we have the soft matte in the shade Magnolia 342. If anyone's also pale looking for pink, not orange shades, everything just comes out orange on me, which is why I'm so excited for the new Pillow Talk Fair lip liner and lipstick because even the regular Pillow Talk can look a little bit orangey on pale people. Oh, and they've put matte packaging on this for, for matte. I think it's all in the details and Hourglass really knows how to do details, just like the different coloring for the packaging for the cream blush and highlight. Like it all just adds to that ambiance. Okay, orange, <laughs> great. It's so hard to buy things online, but this is quite clearly orange. I don't know what I thought it was going to be. Obviously, I didn't think it was going to be orange or I wouldn't have got it. I think orange looks fine on my face, but just not on my lips. There's something about that that just doesn't work for me. Feels very creamy, but that is like straight up orange. I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe with like a different lip line or something, I can make this work. Or maybe I'll become an orange lipstick lover. Who knows? Um, and then this is the pink. Like I said, let me just try that on the back of my hand. Oh, that might be an amazing shade. So that's that one. You can obviously quite clearly tell the difference. This is like a very neutral, almost cool toned pink, which is really nice. And that's obviously a coral shade. Let me actually try this on my lips. The beautiful pink um, with this not amazing shade of lip liner, honestly. Uh, let me try. Oh, it's crumbling too. I hate it. You can't blend it out. You can't like, feather it ever so slightly because it just crumbles. I don't know if that's how the lip liner is supposed to be, but it's crumbling. I just wanted to blend it out a little bit. And it's not even like it's because it's set because even when it's freshly applied, it does this too. Um, it's just not the best. It's not very malleable. It's not, you know, workable. That's that. I'm done complaining about the lip liners. They're just not that good in my opinion. That's quite gorgeous actually. It tastes just like a typical vanilla lipstick, like what you imagine when they put like vanilla type scents into lipsticks. That's exactly what it tastes like and smells like. It's quite strong actually. I think that looks really nice actually. Obviously it looks very orange because of that lip liner. There's like not much I can do with that. And if things look a little bit more orange on my camera personally, um, just because the settings are a little bit messed up, but it feels comfortable. It feels good. It looks shiny, sheeny and pretty, but I wanna use it with a different lip liner that I actually know I'll like. I've got two more of these Phantom Volumizing Glossy Balms because I actually do really like these. I have the shade Sense, which I really like. So I got these on sale. Um, they're basically the equivalent of like the Tarte Maracuja Lips. And then I also got a lip gloss. This is the Unreal High Shine Volumizing Lip Gloss in the shade Provoke 606, but it looks separated. Can you guys see that? It's like so separated. Oh, it smells like peppermint tea, but like very strong peppermint tea. That's quite pleasant. Actually, I'm just gonna use it on top of this lipstick and then take this lippy off. Try again with the balms that I actually do like. Uh, okay, and it looks orange again. I swear this is supposed to be pink. I mean, that's just color theory. You know, you apply it to the wrong lip shade and all of a sudden you got orange. This is the lip gloss. Um, I think not on top of lipstick, it would look so much better. It looks a little bit thick right now. I bet with just a lip liner, it would look quite nice. It's minty feeling. It actually looks fine. I think it's more so the like products underneath. I think I just don't like when there's like so much happening on my lips. Wipe all of that off. Maybe if I powder my lips a little bit, it will come out a little bit more pigmented. Let me just do that. I'm trying it on top of a set lip. 
like it's just not very pigmented. I just think the formula is not very like malleable and workable and stuff so it just ends up crumbling. I can already see as I'm going over and just evening things out it's getting that shiny look again which is just going to crumble and it just doesn't feel very comfortable but I should be allowed to, controversial opinion, keep on working on my lip liner until I get the right shape. That's the whole point of it. I don't know why it gets so finicky and like crusty looking. So these are just not my favorite. I'm sorry. These are saying literally that they're a shape and sculpt. I'm not allowed to shape and sculpt if I'm not allowed to go over it more than like twice. So I just don't know what's happening with this formula, but it's just not great. I bought Rise and Desire. So I've got Scents, Rise and Desire, which I think are like the three kind of the lighter shades. So Rise is 100. Once again, looks a little bit orange, <laughs> like everything. Let me put that. Oh, actually, no, it doesn't. That's great. Okay, so that's that. Obviously, very not opaque. What's the opposite of opaque? Sheer. I've been filming for way too long, and that's not even the last video I have to film today, so my brain is slowly switching off. And then we have Desire 120, which is a darker shade. I wanted something that I could use as like a little bit of a tint. That one's like a nice pink, actually. I think that's going to be really nice for just adding some shape and definition to the lips. I love doing a bit of like a lip lining and then doing a light shade and then just like a pinky or a red inside. I think that looks absolutely beautiful. I might actually do that today with these two because I think they'll actually do what I need for this look to happen. So, uh, all over, apply this one. These are like a beautiful formula, honestly. Uh, okay, that's that. That just added a bit of life to my lips. All of a sudden, like, I'm okay with my makeup now because a lip just does all of the work. If your lip looks bad, I just think, like, you're done. The makeup looks bad. Now, let me just take that one and wipe a little bit off the inside so the product doesn't bunch up. These are almost, like, a little bit too sheer to do that with. But the idea is there. I love that. That's perfect. Okay. Things have been saved. Things have been made. That is the full face of Hourglass. We've had some highs. We've had some lows. Let me know what you think about any of these. Are you picking up any of these? Do you have any of these? Do you recommend anything else? Um, subscribe for the bell icon for engagement. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.